Hey guys, Olga here. Uh, happy Monday. And today we're going to be talking about complaining. Why it doesn't work. Why we do it. What's the root cause of complaining? And how to, what to do instead of complaining. Sounds pretty obvious, but actually it's a bit more complex than we think. And I want to tell you all about it. But first, happy November. This is the first mo Monday of November. And I've got some pretty exciting news. I've been pretty active all fall, creating great things for all of you, my listeners and my audience. And uh, in November, we're going to be having two early enrollments or an early enrollment for both of my programs, which is the first time ever I've done this. So this is a great opportunity for you to jump in, to be coached by me if you've been thinking about it. Both Reset Your Mindset and Becoming the CEO of Your Own Life are now, well, in the next few weeks, are going to be open for early enrollment. So what does it mean, early enrollment? It means you get to sign up months before the programs actually start which has, in the case of Reset, the best perk is that you get to have immediate access to all of my mindset teachings. So you get to be, in a way, like coach. You get to have all of the tools before we even start coaching in February. So you sign up in November and then you have December, January to be watching all of these videos. So extra time with the content. And then you have three months of coaching with me, which starts in February. And also by doing so early, you also have added now three months because the early enrollment for Reset is November 28th, 29th and 30th. And then you get to have an extra three months for the payment plan. So your payments will get reduced to, I think, $300 a month by doing it this way. Now, becoming the CEO of your own life only opens once a year. We're about to open. Our official enrollment is in December, but we're going to have early enrollment November 15th, 16th, and 17th. The same perks that for Reset, the sooner you get into the work and the sooner and the more months you have to spread your payments, which also come down quite a bit. All right. So that's it. Now let's dive into complaining. So I was coaching one of my Becoming the CEO clients in her one-on-one -on -one session. And she says to me, Olga, until you mention that complaining doesn't normally help, that energy doesn't help, I hadn't noticed that what I was doing was complaining. And so I asked her, what did you think you were doing? And she said, I honestly just thought I was communicating my frustration. And so we had a brilliant session. It was a lot of fun. I took notes and notes and notes from this session. And she won't be surprised when I say, when I went that, that we're doing a podcast about this, because I told her, you know what? This has been so fun. I bet you anything, you're not the only one who thinks Complaining is a form of communication. And I suppose any kind of words is a, are a form of communication that is not an efficient way of communicating what we actually want to communicate. Nobody wants to hear anybody complain. Nobody has time for that. We're all deaf to complaints. And there are more efficient ways in which we can process frustration and problem solve. So I'm going to dive into this. I hope you enjoy it. First of all, let's see, do you complain? What's complaining? Also called venting. <laughs> you know, when you sit at somebody's desk and at work and you're like, oh my God, the manager today, can't believe what he did. And you just go on, I just need to vent. Or when you just Go to your friend and say, I really have to vent about what happened with my husband today because somebody has to hear this. And you just begin to tell the story, but from, from your lenses with all of your frustration. And what you really truly hope <laughs> is that the other person is going to say, oh my God, what an asshole. Oh yes, your boss sucks. 
or yeah, that is so frustrating. Like there is nothing more frustrating to somebody who's complaining than to go and vent to somebody and that somebody says, well, that's your fault. Or that person says, ah, I don't think that's big, a big deal. Or that person dismisses your frustration or says, it's, you know, you shouldn't be frustrated about this. It's, it puts an end to the complaining. It didn't create the kind of pity that we hope to create when we're in complaining mode. And it also didn't solve the problem. So, yeah, that's you. That's what complaining is. So how to stop complaining? Why do we do it? How to avoid it? And uh, I think that's it. So first of all, you're in the energy of complaining when... You think you're in the energy, in the energy of problem solving. The problem being that you actually are not formulating a plan to solve the problem and implementing it. You're staying on stage one. There's got to be another way. You might even think of the other way. And that's it. You're still sitting in traffic. <laughs> the traffic hasn't stopped. So when you're like, oh my God, they shouldn't do construction in October. That's that's not offering a solution. That's part of the complaint about the construction that is happening in October that is making you sit in traffic a little longer. So the person who's complaining, unbeknown to them, is actually not interested in the solution. Think about it. If you're complaining, you're not precisely looking for somebody to give you the right solution. You're just not looking for a solution because the complaining will stop and your frustration will have to come to an end. <laughs> And guess what? You are, if you're a complainer, you're a bit addicted to the adrenaline that comes from feeling frustrated. So the energy of the complainer is one that feels frustrated, but is not interested in not feeling frustrated. So think of the last time you were complaining about something that annoys you. And tell me that you would have loved for a solution in that moment of complaining. I'm not saying long-term that you don't wish for traffic to never be a problem, but in the moment of traffic and somebody telling you, hey, why don't you just breathe and meditate? In that moment, you wanna tell them to F off because you're not interested in that. You're just telling them how frustrated you are. Now, my client said that when she feels frustrated, she complains about it. So she will say out loud all the thoughts she's having about this situation that is creating frustration. And she thinks, what she thought that would do is that it would release the frustration, the pressure in her chest, that she would just feel better. And it might be that she's, she does feel better because she, her brain thinks she did something about the problem, talking to Rita about it. And, and there might be a momentaneous release that did you feel relieved for a moment because you said it with somebody else? But think of the energy you're left. Think of you going to Rita and telling her how your boss sucks and Rita saying, oh my God, he does. He did this to me as well. How do you leave that meeting? <laughs> you're both now complaining. How do you leave that meeting? Do you leave feeling like, oh, so relieved? Often it just heightened that energy that you had prior to the complaining. The frustration gets bigger. The solution is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> okay. So the energy of the complainer most definitely is one that wants to get stuck in the problem. You probably feel comfortable feeling stuck. You probably say this a lot about to yourself is that you are stuck. Uh, I just feel this way often. It's a familiar feeling. It's a familiar frustration. You probably feel a lot of the times that, yeah, that you're stuck with this. So pay attention to that because that might mean that you're not all that interested in the solution because unbeknown to you, you have become a little addicted to the feeling that comes with complaining, okay? That adrenaline that is releasing to your body. So why it happens, actually, so this is interesting. Why do we, why are we in that energy of complaining? Why do we feel that we've got to? complain that we have to vent why do we even feel that is helpful now we've discovered that although you think it's helpful it's not 
because the problem hasn't been solved. You're back to square one where it all started. (laughs) And you're not better able to cope with that frustration should it come again. So that's what tells us that it's not helpful. So what's the energy? I was talking to you about the energy of the person who complains. Let's say you're Rita and Olga is coming and she complains and and Olga leaves. How is Rita now feeling? Somebody came and dumped on her and triggered her to also complain. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying that that's Olga's problem if Rita also began to complain. Rita had uh, uh, free will and choice and she chose to do that. But maybe Rita didn't have something else to complain. Maybe that even didn't get triggered. But even with that being triggered, let us all get done now. She went with her garbage and dropped it off somewhere and kept going, thinking, feeling lighter because she has felt lighter. She left some garbage behind. But she's now giving it to somebody else. So what is this purpose of complaining? Why do we do it? Why do we give it to other people? just doesn't seem right. <laughs> I know for a fact, I, I don't like it at all when people complain. It feels heavy. And I know it, I am a coach, so I always want to offer a solution. And I know when the person is complaining is not open to suggestions. And so it feels like it's a just one end, one way conversation where you're just going to dump a lot of issues and feelings, and uh, I'm going to shut my mouth and knock my head and be like, I hear you, which is very helpful to do when somebody's expressing really difficult emotions. But when somebody's complaining and not looking inwards, they're missing, right? And that feels heavy. That's just a heavy energy for them to have. And it's a heavy energy for all of the people around them to to receive. So when the complainer is in complaining mode, the complainer has victimized themselves, right? That that's what we complain. We complain when something has been wrong to us. Has has uh yeah, when we have been wronged, when something bad has happened to us, when you know, so if it's traffic, the traffic is doing this to you. If it's your boss, your boss is doing this to you. If it's the weather, the weather did this to you. If it's the economic situation, then the government did this to you. There is always someone to blame. So the complainer must be also somebody who blames. And I bet you anything he or she hates being blamed (laughs) because the action of complaining and blaming has one particular characteristic, and that is the avoidance of responsibility. So the moment you choose to complain about the uh, weather, the traffic, You have given all power of your patience to weather, traffic, boss. And you've forgotten that you've got responsibility on how you feel in your attitude, what you do about it. So complaining is sort of like a mindset, but it's one that is just uh, heavy for everybody. And it doesn't bring you anywhere close to a solution. So if you were to think of the traffic and you're sitting in it and you're complaining about it, but you're not moving anywhere, how is that waiting period feeling now for you? And if you happen to be with other people in the car, how is that feeling for them? Now they're in traffic with somebody complaining about it. <laughs> it's like somebody mentioning the obvious. <laughs> What's the point? What are we trying to do here? Can you get out of the car and walk? No, that's not an option. Can you clear the traffic? Is that an option? Then what can you do? And that's when you come back to you. I like one of my clients said to me the other day that when we're pointing the index finger towards somebody, we're also pointing three fingers towards ourselves. And so for every time you're pointing out somewhere, you're pointing three times to you, like pay even more attention to what you can do about it. So sometimes the the, uh, solution to not complain is to think to ourselves, so what can I do about it? What attitude do I want to have about this thing that is making me complain. Looking for my notes. Okay. So what is the skill that the complainer is lacking? I think I just alluded to that. Owning responsibility. First and foremost, the complainer is not looking at their own energy, how they showed up to their bosses. Is it true perhaps that they're not showing up on time? (laughs) Is it true perhaps that 
they can polish their work a little bit more. Is it true perhaps that the boss jobs is to follow, is to make it sure that everybody follows the rules, right? Like what, what's going on? What is your responsibility? And it could be if it's something as neutral as the weather or traffic, like I said, that you taking responsibility means you making sure that your ride is not unpleasant because you have that choice. How can you start looking forward to traffic? Like for me now, when I face traffic, I think, yay, a few, a, few, a little bit more longer time listening to a podcast. The other skill that the complainer is lacking is acceptance, huh. which goes hand in hand with the second, the third skill missing by the complainer, which is patience. Patience. Patience and acceptance are not the same thing. Acceptance is understanding what is happening. It's not one thing, things to be different from what they are right at this moment. That is the definition, my definition of acceptance, and I like it. It is not the same as giving up or settling down, as some people think, or liking something you don't like. None of those things equal acceptance. Acceptance simply means that you look around, you see there is traffic, and you accept that for the next little while, that's the reality. There is traffic, you're in your car. Doesn't mean that you get to love it, but it does mean that you own responsibility and you think to yourself, what do I want to do with the time that I now have in my hands? And then patience. Oh my God, I think everybody can use some patience in life, a lot of it. But especially if you find yourself being a complainer, you need to be patient with whatever you're complaining about. <laughs> what if you were to add patience to that? The traffic, the government, to your job, to your boss, to how your husband does their dishes, whatever it is that you complain about. Maybe you just add a dose or two of patience and see how that changes things for you. Now, why do we complain? We complain because we, like I said, the brain might think that this is us doing something about it. We complain because this may have been role model for us. So maybe our parents were big complainers because their parents were big complainers. Sometimes I feel this is a learned behavior. We complain because we feel obligated to look at how things will not work, are not working, and we forget that there are options always of thoughts, <laughs> of ways of viewing something. So you, you might feel really trapped in a very tunnel vision kind of thinking, which a lot of my clients do, which is why they do mindset work so that they we open up their way of looking at life, their perceptions open. And when their perceptions open, everything changes. And I mean everything without anything changing. So they have the same life, the same husband, the same job, but suddenly it all, it, it all seems like better <laughs> and stronger and happier and all along is the same people the same circumstances but it is my client who has changed the way they look at things so you 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 complain because at the time it feels like my client was saying that that's i'm just communicating i'm communicating my frustration but it's not the same to call my husband and tell him when you drop your clothes all over the house and I've been trying really hard to keep the house clean, I feel frustrated. That makes me feel like my work, it's never done. Is there anything you can do on your end about this? That would have been me expressing a frustration. That is different and sounds very different than calling my husband and saying, you never pick up your clothes. Your clothes are all over the house. You always do it this way. You don't care about, about how much work I put towards the house. It sucks, you suck, this sucks. See, although I did change my tone of voice, <laughs> it's because the complainer does change the tone of voice. And so you can communicate your frustration. You can even say, oh my God, traffic is not my biggest, it's not my favorite thing. It's frustrating to have so much traffic. And then problem solve for your frustration, your way out of your frustration. What are you going to do? So don't communicate complaining with proper communication skills because nobody wants to hear anybody complain. Nobody. Think about it. How willing are you to hear somebody complain about something? 
for a little bit, if you're great about it, for a little bit, you like it. But after a while, you will not like it. So to stop complaining, you want to become aware of my client. Yes, I love her. She was like, Olga, okay, until you mentioned it, I didn't realize I was complaining. And now I'm thinking I've been a complainer my entire life. This is what my kids call nagging. This is what my, you know, my entire family has mentioned this. And she says, my father used to do it. I used to hate it. I can see why people run away. <laughs> and I come to the house and I start talking about how many shoes are at the front. So the first step is to become aware. All along, she really, truly thought she was just communicating her frustration. I'm probably, and we didn't talk about this, but she probably wondered why that was not effective. <laughs> Why word? Why why did she have to say the same thing a million times over? Um, and then she herself recognized with that awareness the type of energy she will bring to herself and to places when she was in complaining mode. So that's why next week I'm going to be talking about how to clean your energy. But for this week, I want you to notice if you complain, and I just want you to know that it doesn't work. It just doesn't do anything good to you or to anybody. So set yourself an intention. And I don't care who you are. We all complain. I actually had made this a goal for me a while back when I worked at a place where it was so easy to complain about all the things, all the people. And we all used to complain. And we used to have lunch in a little room while complaining. Like, I think back of those moments and I think to myself, what? How did I even survive this? Like, every day. It felt heavy walking into work. I remember just like... I'm walking into work. It's time to start complaining (laughs) because that was the energy of this environment. And it was heavy. And when we didn't complain, we, it's like we had nothing to talk about. (laughs) What are we going to talk about? The weather? Okay. That's boring. And so I remember at that time in my life, I decided that I didn't like the feeling. I was feeling really heavy. Every day to go to work felt so heavy. And I realized I couldn't really change policies. I couldn't really change management. I couldn't change anything but me, my attitude. And I decided to stop complaining. And so I did a few things. First of all, I set myself a goal to not complain. So I realized it was useless. So I uh, put a ribbon on my wrist and I made it be a reminder of not complaining. And because I was in such an environment where complaining was so easy, it was good for me to have a visual that for the, and I gave myself a month for this month, I'm not going to complain. And I made it like a challenge for myself, not complaining. And if I was about to say, oh my God, how ugly is the rain today? I would just be half sentence, stop myself and be like, never mind. I'm not doing this. There's no point in putting these words out into the world (laughs) or these thoughts. Like why? So I had that visual aid. I also told everybody that I was not engaging in complaining anymore. That I felt really heavy and almost depressed every day coming into work. Because we complained so much, all I could start seeing was all the wrong that everything had, all the wrong things. And that's what complaining does. It trains your brain to just look at everything that's not working. And that that was feeling really heavy for me and so that I was not going to partake or engage in complaining and that they could expect for me to tell them, oh, sorry, you're complaining. I, I, do you mind if we change the subject? So I actually told my teammates that. And in addition to that, And because I could at this job, I brought my earphones and I would just put them on while I was working so I couldn't hear people complain. That worked like a charm. I felt a million times better. I saw the change in myself. I I saw what happened to me. And I became less patient and tolerable. I had less tolerance. So whereas people complaining for the sake of complaining and I became really keen on finding solutions problem solving then my client said well i am a complainer who's got solutions however if you're just telling the solutions not to the person who could implement them (laughs) you're just still in complaining mode okay so implementation is really key for problem solving and when the problem is too big it's a systematic problem it's a generational problem something that big it is not that you shouldn't do anything you can you should like do it But sometimes the biggest accomplishment that we can have to create bigger change is to change ourselves. That's it. So with that, I want to leave you. Don't complain. Stop complaining. It does not work. It does not make you feel better. It does not solve the problem. It does not make anybody feel better. 
you can stop. You can intentionally say, I will no longer complain. This is not good for me. And the moment that you catch yourself in complaining mode, simply stop it. Just like stop talking. <laughs> oh, you know what? I was just going to complain. That's not helpful. Done. And in your own time, in your journaling, you can just sort of think of like what really bothers me about that scenario. Why do I complain so much about it? What's in my hands to control my own attitude? What attitude do I want to have? What will make me feel better about it? What will ease my frustration towards this? If it's the traffic, the weather. Winter is one of those things. Everybody complains about winter. And like, for those of us who live in Canada, I'm always shocked. They're like, why are you in Canada still? <laughs> you don't like it. There's something about it. Even if it is changing your thoughts about winter, like I did. I found magic in winter. And still, it's not my favorite season. But I don't hate it either. And I certainly don't complain about it. It's just useless. All right. Hope that is helpful to you. I hope that ma that makes you reflect and think of whether or not you're complaining, you're in victimizing yourself because of whatever it is that you're complaining about. How can you take some responsibility? How can you grow some patience? How can you um, stop yourself from complaining, realizing that it's not providing a solution? And how can you accept things as they are unfolding? All right. See you guys next Monday to talk about how to clean your energy. Bye for now.